Hello, YouTubers. This is a new session in the podcast series where we get to talk about people who are passionate about technology, pioneers in the tech industry, people that develop systems and tools and influence the tech industry in so many different ways. Today, I am uh, joined by my dear brother, Syed Hashemi. How are you doing, Syed? Hello. How's it going? Good. Thank you. <laughs> Good, good. Syed, Syed is 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 a principal uh, technical program manager, principal engineer at Microsoft. He's a big guy. You know, he he's he's one of the people that influence how Visual Studio and the tools in Visual Studio works. So if you're using Visual Studio out there, you know, every time you're using a cool feature, you know, know that there are amazing people such as Syed, you know, sitting there kind of thinking about the best tooling and the best capability you know, that they can do to expedite your development process. The impact of the work that Syed does, you know, goes into millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of engineers everywhere using every programming language you can you can imagine. And, uh, you know, without, without any, you know, further ado, you know, Syed, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, your origins, you know, how did you end up at Microsoft? Tell us your story, man. You know, I'm really curious. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, sure. No problem. Um... Yeah, I think my story is probably a little, I think everybody has their own kind of unique uh, Microsoft story there, right? And, yeah. and may, maybe some people can resonate with my story. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, for me, I was born in Afghanistan mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, I was there with my family and um, mm -hmm. I think it was at around the age of two, we we left Afghanistan. So that, that, that this was the early 1980s and there was a war that was happening at that time with the former USSR and yeah. and my dad, you know, he said to himself, he said, hey, I'm going to stay until they either come to my home or to my office. And uh -huh. and then at that point, then we'll go ahead and leave. Right. And and what happened was and <clears throat> what happened was that um, I guess they came to his office there at the time. My oh. dad was working at the World Bank in Kabul, Afghanistan. At the time, they came to the World Bank and. I guess just kind of took over or I'm not really sure what transpired. I was very young at that time. So they came and and then um, I, got, I guess my dad made some sort of arrangements. And and then what we did was we fled at, in the middle of the night. Interesting. Um, as far as what I know, you know, we kind of shaved our heads and wore all black and wow. took uh -huh. what, what took the money and what little kind of things that we had and and then left, right? And and then we spent, I think, about maybe um, six months in Pakistan, uh -huh. and then we came to the to the U.S. and we were in Virginia uh, when we first got here. And my dad was working at the World Bank in Virginia. Um, and then and then I guess he had some kind of problems with. He had a manager that was younger at the time, and. You know, Afghans are all about age, right? And respecting yep. the elders and yep. And I guess he had some kind of problems. And, you know, he said, hey, I do, this is not for me. And wh what ended up happening was um, a few of his friends, they wanted to open a restaurant mm -hmm. and they found a good location in Florida mm -hmm. uh, for, for a restaurant. So I think my, it was my dad and two, two, two of his friends uh, moved to Florida, opened this restaurant, and then from there he was doing that for a while, and and he eventually bought his friends out, I guess, and then he was the sole owner. And nice, nice. And then he was doing that, and then um, I would work a lot at the restaurant. Uh, even when I was younger, I would I would I would be at the restaurant every day. I wasn't in school, right? And my mom would watch me there, and I would try to help out a little bit, and. When I was a teenager, my dad ended up selling the restaurant and uh, opened a dry cleaner. And uh, at one point, he did have a few locations, like five locations of dry cleaning stores or whatever. Nice. nice. And um, I worked at the dry cleaners as well when I was younger. Like on, on Saturdays, I would always be at the dry clean. Uh, stuff like that. And then, um, and you know, it's not like we were well off, right? I mean, <clears throat> yeah, he had a few locations of dry cleaning stores, but the money that was coming in was going out at the same time, right? Yep. So I would say yep. that we were pretty much lower middle class, not like poor, but but lower middle class. Surviving. There was, like, there was yeah, not a whole lot left yeah. over for us, right? I mean, you know, yeah. we had one television in the house and not many luxuries, right? And mm -hmm. not a whole lot of toys and <clears throat> all that kind of stuff, right? And 
And, you know, this was back before, like, the Internet and such access. You know, like, today the yep. world is open, right? I mean, you want to learn about something? It's out it's there. So easy. You get on a computer or a phone or a tablet and you learn it. Uh, what I did at that time was, and, I, you know, this was also totally different too, right? Like when you buy an appliance mm -hmm. or you buy any piece of equipment, that's too loud. Don't do that here. You buy any piece of equipment, mm -hmm. it'll always come with this thick manual that described every single detail of the operations and even right. the inside of that, that equipment. So what I would do is I would start reading those, those manuals mm -hmm. just because I had nothing else to do really. Mm-hmm. And I would read those manuals, right? And, you know, whatever kind of thing that my dad bought, I would read the manual, right? Whether it was a, a television or a refrigerator, a dishwasher, whatever it was. I would Just read curiosity. The manuals. You want to read? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to know everything about it, you know, and how it worked and all that kind of stuff. And I'm the youngest uh, son. I have three older brothers there. Mm -hmm. When I was about, uh, I can't remember, 12 or 13, uh, was when was when we got our first computer in the house and I think it was for my older it was probably for my one of my older brothers mm -hmm. um, We got that computer. It was a, a 386. I, I don't remember all the kind of specs on it but uh -huh. Is that the one with the oh like the Commodore or something like that or no, yeah. no this would this would be after the Commodore, after the Commodore. Okay. Year, You know a little bit after the Commodore. So yeah, it was a X is a 386 type of processor yeah. or whatever it's something like that I don't, I don't remember all these details before but. pentium after commodore gotcha yeah 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 and even before um this was before windows 95 when they came out with the ux right so yeah. it was yeah. mostly i think windows 3.1 or mostly command something like line. that right something and like it was that. all command line right and and then what ended up happening was you know i would use that computer right and and then eventually I got into scripting with basic, I believe it was at that time. And nice, nice. you know, it was hard to learn stuff at that time too. Right. I mean, you know, yeah, you had libraries, but you know, my parents, they own their own business. Right. And yep. Yep. a dry cleaning business is, is a tough business to own because you have to get there very early and it's not as bad as a restaurant. A restaurant is the worst. It's the, it's the hardest. In a restaurant, yeah. you show up early in the morning, you leave late at night. It's yep. the worst type of business to own, yep. I think. But, yep. you know, they were always busy, right? And, you know, they couldn't uh, take me to these places to learn, right? So I remember we would get those AOL CDs at the time, you know? It was like yep. X number of minutes or hours of the internet. And With the internet, yeah. <laughs> they would keep coming in the mail, so then I would keep using it. And... And from there, I slowly learned basic to kind of automate some things that I was doing at the time. Nice. And just to play around, right? Learn new things. And, and you know, even though that computer was initially purchased, I think, for my, for my older brother. And, and by the way, all my brothers are named Syed. And my dad's oh, named Syed. Are, and nice, it's nice. All the males in our family are Syed. And just by the way, for the people watch, I think Syed is, is an Arabic word. It means master or or a a boss or something like that is that what it means well i'm not sure about the definition in arabic but yeah. the, the true um the true meaning of the word syed or the name syed uh -huh. is that you're a descendant of prophet muhammad as as far nice. as i know nice. Um, nice but you know i could be wrong on that but that's my understanding of it yeah. so uh, your your last I'm... your last name too Hashimi. That's like the yeah. you know the descent. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yep. that's right. That's, that's right. right. Yeah, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the uh, the royals of Jer Jordan are called the Hashimite tribe. Yep. So yep. Must must be related to them somehow, I guess. Nice. Um, yeah. Back to the story. Okay. So basic, right? So I would, yeah. and then even though that computer was purchased for my older brother, mm -hmm. I and he's like six years older than I am. Uh, I, have, I have, there was another brother in between and, and also another brother older than him. Nice. Um, even though it was purchased for him, you know, it wasn't very long that I was more kind of proficient yep. at that computer than, than what he was. Yeah. And, uh, and then I just kept using the computer and kept learning and, and then, um, what ended up happening was, uh, my older brother, the same one that I'm talking about, his we call, I call his his name is Syed and he's the only one okay so let me explain the names here basically right so <laughs> I told ahead. you all my brothers and everybody is named Syed right so yes. we don't actually go by the name Syed uh-huh um I do in like a professional context and but normally 
I go by my middle name, which is Abraham or Ibrahim. Ibrahim, yeah. So yeah. I go by I go by Abraham, and um, my brother, who we actually do call Syed. So his middle name is a tough one for Americans to pronounce. It's, yeah. Uh, it's Yahya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. when yeah. we came. And Yahya, Yahya uh, that translates to John the Baptist somehow. Yep, yep. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> uh, I think he was in middle school at the time when we, when we came to the U.S. And people were making fun of his name, having a really hard time pronouncing it, calling him Yuhu. Oh. Uh, and then, uh, and then he said, "Well, I'll just go by my first name, uh, Syed." So, yeah, so we, yeah. we, so he goes by Syed, but the others, the others go by Abraham. Nice. And then. Um, they're all what beautiful names was... by the way just so you know these are all oh, yeah. amazing Thank names you. yeah 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 yeah, Thank yeah. You. yeah my other brothers is uh ishmael and isaac yeah <clears throat> so they're all kind of nice. religious names there nice. but um nice. i'm not very religious um but anyways my older brother that we call syed mm -hmm. uh, actually it's even more complicated because mm -hmm. they all have nicknames i don't have a nickname Okay. So I guess at the time when we were in Afghanistan, uh -huh. when they were born, we had a maid, like a long time maid, and she assigned the nicknames. And then I guess she wasn't there or she passed or something by the time I was born. So I never really got a nickname, but all my brothers have nicknames. So the brother that is normally called Syed, his nickname mm -hmm. is Farid. So we call him Farid. Farid, yeah. And um, unique, unique. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then. What happened was he went to university to study uh, civil engineering. Mm. But while he was doing that in his master's degree, he was doing some research and he had to create some kind of program for analyzing the bridges or whatever it was, right? And I think that was in C++ at that time. And after he did that, he figured out he could make more money doing programming versus civil engineering. So then he mm. went down the programming path. and. And I was already kind of on that path, I think, right? Even though I was much younger than him. You just you just gravitated towards computers. You just it just yeah. made sense yeah. to you. Nice. I think you know. I think I knew I wanted to do something with computers at the age of fifteen or sixteen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My parents, like like a lot of other kind of Afghan parents, they wanted me to be a doctor. A doctor or you know, an engineer, always. <laughs> no, even not even doctor just, or just engineer. Doc it was just, just doctor, doctor right? Just, just doctor. doctor, right? And yep. Yep. Ever since I was like a young kid, you know, you're going to be a doctor, you're going to be a doctor and blah, blah, blah. Right. And That's I made right. this realization. Right. And I'm like, wow, I'm going to have to kind of break this to my parents somehow that I don't want to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. you know, that was no big deal. But um, so then um, then I think what happened was, um, you know, I went to high school. My brother was in college at the time. And and then he starts getting into programming and. And then uh, I knew that I wanted to do something with computers too, and I think I kind of landed on, you know, uh, software development. And um, I finished high school, and then I went to university and I studied computer engineering at the University of Florida. Yeah, yeah. Uh, people might know them as the Gators there, Florida Gators. Nice, nice. But you know, my uh, I was never into school, to be quite frank, right? <clears throat> All the smart people are not into school, so I just want to gotta tell you, <laughs> this is, this is, this yeah. is, this is not, this is a good thing. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, and you know, honestly, I was never into school, and I absolutely hated homework. Yeah. But what I was always into was my interests and my hobbies, and um, and I would spend a lot of time on my interests and my hobbies, right? And by the time that I was able to write code, I would be spending a lot of time writing code. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. just outside of any sort this of a passion of right? yours. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. This, is, this yeah. is beautiful. Keep going. And I and I never got good grades. Right. <laughs> and, you know, you know, you have to understand, I never had anybody that would really kind of guide me through the kind of system. And, you know, I never understood really the benefit of good grades either. Yeah. You know, now that I know I would have done things differently. But what I'm trying to say is. You know, I thought it was more valuable to spend time on my hobbies and my interests to get to know those better and then to just kind of get by at school, right? But, you know, that did cause me some difficulties, right? Like, you know, for example, uh, when I graduated high school, my GPA was no good. Um, I couldn't get into the University of Florida, so I went to a community college and uh, for two years and I got my AA. The and, credit. Yeah. 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 And then that was the same, it was, it was in the same area that university of Florida is in. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I was able to then get into University of Florida. Um, and even at the University of Florida, right? If I was interested in the class, then I would, I would do good. I would get good grades, but otherwise not, right? You know, I even, you know, I even failed geography, right? And, you know, I just hated the class. I just, yep. what's the point of memorizing just didn't all this make stuff? Any, and yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna forget about it next week or whatever it is. And you know, I ended up failing that class, right? Yeah. Um, and then, so from there, uh, oh yeah, while I was at uh, University of Florida undergraduate i got more of an interest in computer graphics so mm -hmm. i took some computer graphics classes and and then um i met a professor his his name is uh dr benjamin Locke, l-o-k mm -hmm. he's uh, he's still at the university of florida today and at that time he had some res or he still has it going on he has a research program going on that's called um verge, verge. virtual experience research group Nice. And and he was he was actually pretty new to the University of Florida at the time and, and being a professor in general, I think it was like his one, first one or two years at that time. And and then I approached him. I said, hey, you know, it sounds like you got some really great things going on here. And I've just taken this computer graphics class and I'd like to get involved with you doing some research. <clears throat> and then he said, OK, that's fine. You can sign up for this for this class where you'll just be doing research with me. There's no actual class. So I did that. And then, and then for the remainder of my time, I was working with him kind of mm -hmm. after the classes. Right. And you just and liked then, man, working with him and, and kind of growing with air. Yeah. Yeah. And that was really great. Right. Because, um, it was some really kind of, you know, now that I look back on it, it was really kind of cutting edge at the time. Right. I mean, you know, think this is, um, this is like 2003, 2004, right? And mm. we were doing stuff with virtual reality at that time, right? And um, I built a couple kind of cool projects with him, right? Like um, mm -hmm. one was a, um, it's a virtual, so one aspect of, of Dr. Locke's uh, research is for applying virtual humans to, to teach uh, doctors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's say if you're a resident and you have to diagnose a patient. Mm -hmm. The problem is, you know, finding patients that need to be diagnosed, right? So, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so with, with with what we call virtual humans, and a virtual human we defined at the time would be uh, you be able you can interact with a with a screen where you'll see a person uh -huh. in life size, and then you can interact with them through speaking and gestures. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Um, so yeah, so that was his kind of research, right? So what what I worked on was. It was a tool to more easily create these virtual human apps. Oh my God. Like you're doing virtual reality before it even was a thing, basically. Nice. Yeah. I mean, it was really kind of cutting nice. edge, right? And, yeah. <clears throat> and along with that, I created like a kind of a scripting language. I didn't even really know scripting language at the time, but, you know, I needed to make it to where non developers can create these virtual human apps, right? So I had to create this very kind of basic language of, you know, move person A to, to yep. this location, raise his arm or raise, raise, raise the, the leg or whatever it is, right? Yep. And say these certain things. And yep. so that was kind of a scripting app that I created there. And, and I think that if I recall correctly, I believe it was implemented with managed C++ at that time. This mm -hmm. was when... Like CLI, C++ CLI, the... Uh, or, oh, wait, you know, manage C++. Okay, okay, okay. Because it was all in Visual Studio there, yeah. So it okay, was a flavor yeah. of C++ that was managed. Yep. <clears throat> I'm not even sure if that thing exists anymore, but we built that. And then um, another thing that I built was a uh, an ATM machine that you would interact with a virtual human, and it spoke nice. multiple languages as well. So you you put in your fake credit card and... And it will it will detect your language on the credit card, and nice. I also did like a head tracking kind of thing. So you had to wear this hat that had two or three nice. lights on it, and then I was tracking those lights, and the virtual human's eyes would move nice. uh, to look at nice. you. So that was another project, and That's and uh, that was a real a really great opportunity for me, right? And and uh, but you know, at the end of the day, my grades were no good. Um, you know, I went to the career fairs and all those sorts of things at the University of Florida, but. <laughs> You know, they're only interested in people who have good grades, right? Good, Not good necessarily grade. interested in everybody, right? So, which, you know, which, none of those, 
I, I have to tell you, I, I never understood, like, you know, I, I, I'll tell you this much. This is a pattern that I've been observing in our tech industry in general. Once you find your passion and your purpose, nothing else matters, right? Like nothing else makes sense because your heart is set on this mm -hmm. one thing that you know for sure that this is what you want to do, something that you enjoy. You know, mm -hmm. if you look, you know, you know, a lot of people that have changed the tech industry completely, like if you think of, about someone like Steve Jobs or Bill Gates or any, any, any one of these folks that tried to kind of create something and have some impact, you know, in any way, shape or form in our industry, you just drop off. They'd be like, I don't see this helping mm -hmm. me in any way. You know, yeah. I, I don't know what what what's your take on this? Like, what's your observations in terms of, you know, switch? Because a lot of younger engineers ask me this all the time, like people in high school, graduating high school, be like, do I need to go to get a degree? Right. If I know what I want to do, sometimes you have people that know what they want to do. But uh, what's your advice there? Say, go ahead. Yeah, sure. Well, I think there's two ways. One is the easy way and one is the hard way. Uh -huh. And I think my story is really the hard way. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think the easy way is to go to school, get good grades, get an internship at a big company like Facebook or Google or Microsoft or Amazon or whatever it is, mm -hmm. making lots of money right off the start. It's so easy, right? Yep. You get good yep. grades, you get into a big company making big money, mm -hmm. and it's so easy, right? And, yep. you know, I think the I think a lot of people who get opportunities at these kind of big tech companies are starting as college hires. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, to get in to break into one of these companies after college is a more difficult I think mm -hmm. um, like what happened with me right so then I graduated and you know I had these lousy grades but my brother was a developer at the time and he hooked me up with some of his friends and and then I ended up getting a job as a developer in uh, in Jacksonville and, nice. and that's I, I live in Jacksonville now again okay uh, but I was making really crappy pay dude it was even for the time it was low it was, uh, yeah it was it was 45 grand right and a year <clears throat> wow 45 grand a year and i think i wanted like 65 or 70 at that time yeah but yeah. you know i said whatever dude because i was very confident with my with my coding Skill ability set. right yep. because yep. when i was in university what happened was i took a job at this company called nccer and and by the way you know i said my my family was lower middle class and there was no money left over for me, right? So I had to pay my whole way or loan my whole way through school, right? Wow. Um, so I was constantly working at the time too. So I started working at this place called NCCER and I was like an IT kind of guy there and started dabbling in, in programming there as well. <clears throat> I think it was with, um, I think it was called FileMaker Pro or something like that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it was like some kind of database system and I was doing some, some scripting for that. Nice. Nice. And then, um, and then eventually, um, I think towards my kind of senior year, I worked as a developer for the uh, for the university itself as the as a part of the uni the Department of Housing. Nice. Uh, we were nice. writing Java code at that time, so in my senior year, I was getting paid as a Java developer. Nice. Um, not you know great pay. I think it was. Fifteen dollars an hour, or oh, some wow. kind of low number like it's that. Something but, like, yeah. But at the yeah. time, you know, that's not bad for a college kid, right? Yeah. And and I loved it because I was writing code, right? And yeah. And man, we were in like some, we were in like an old storage room, and it was like me and like two other guys, right? And it's sitting and it was there, like writing all code. like you know, it stinks and whatever. But we didn't care because you know we were literally getting paid to write code, right? It was like yep. the dream come true, right? And yep. So I did that for like a year, and then I had my side projects and. When I was in college, well, you know, I always have some kind of side projects yeah. going on, right? Yeah, and, anyone who, lo who loves their yeah. craft, they always have side projects. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, and at the time, I was interested in uh, what's called lucid dreaming. <laughs> I'm not sure if everybody's familiar with that. So lucid dreaming is when you're dreaming, and then you you can become conscious in your dream and then take over your dream and, and try to do certain things, right? Wow. Um, okay. So I was into lucid dreaming, right? And a big part of lucid dreaming is remembering uh, remembering your dream and, and an, an aspect of remembering your dreams is to actually write them down and to catalog them. Uh, so what I did at the time was I created this Java app. Mm -hmm. um, I think I might even have screenshots of it on my blog. Funny enough. Still, still has your... That. Nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, so I had... Um, so then I developed my kind of, you know, my, my dream... Uh, manager 
uh, app there. Yeah. And then, and then that was a huge project. I remember. Right. And I think it was yeah. like, you know, like cl almost like a hundred thousand lines of code. Yeah. I couldn't find any of the screenshots of that on my, I thought yeah. I had some like really old screenshots of this thing, dude, but this is, th I gotta tell yeah, you, brother, you know, know, this is, this is one of the most like technical blogs I've ever seen. Like you have all the stuff sitting up in here. This is how I expected, you know, just something that told me, you know, mm -hmm. like a lot of people put the smartest things, you, you know, you don't really care about, you know, making it all WordPress. Are you even running this on Word? No, this is SPX. This is, yeah, yeah, yeah. This nice. is, um, nice, <laughs> nice. Uh -huh. I forget what it's called, but uh, Mark Downey recently updated this blog engine. I forget what it's called. It's um, it's a DAS blog, DAS blog, DAS blog. Oh, okay. But this is very old, right? Like, I haven't yeah. done anything with this blog in a very long time, For a right? while, and, yeah. yeah. Uh, if I were to go through now, I'd fix up the styling in a little bit, but... Yep, yep. But uh, i just leave it as it is for now. And But yeah, yeah. This, is, this is DAS blog and... And nice. uh, so where was I at? So yeah, the lucid dreaming. Yes. And then uh, so yeah, I was very kind of confident in my coding abilities for a, for a college kid, right? And uh -huh. and all the all the people that were kind of in my classes, I had no problems keeping up with them from a code perspective. Mm -hmm. So then you know I took this job, and you know I told myself I said, hey, I'll sit here for six months, and and then I'll leave and get a much higher paying job. Mm -hmm. And then what happened was um, I told you about my older brother who we call yep. Farid. Yep. And uh, he had written like one one uh, technical book. I think I think it was one by that time. Nice. And then right. I graduated in, you know, 2005 or, or, or maybe I, I don't know. Yeah, I graduated in 2005 mm -hmm. and then I get this job. And then even before this job starts, my brother comes to me and he goes, hey, we should write a book together. Nice. And I was like, nice. what kind of book are you talking about? He goes, well, there's some new technologies coming out, and one's called Click Once, and the other is called MS Build. Nice. Let's put those two together in a book, so I'll cover the Click Once stuff, and you cover the MS, MS Build stuff. Yeah. And I was like, what the hell is MS Build? I don't even know what it is. I'm not sure if I can do it. He goes, well, just, just figure it out. Just learn it. <laughs> you know, just figure it out, right? So I said, uh, okay, whatever, let's just do it yeah and i was like you know super confident right and you know i never typically i never had a problem with confidence yeah um, yep, I, I think i'm less confident now than than what i was back then but even uh, still very kind of confident you know yeah. and i said yeah let's just do it who cares and then you know we wrote a book together and you know that was probably one of the worst books ever created <laughs> i literally knew nothing about ms build when i started that book right but uh -huh. but when i finished it I uh -huh. really did know MS Build, right? And I looked back and I said, wow, this book really sucks. But I but, learned. But it if I was given learn, an yeah. opportunity to do it again, I'd probably do I think it I much. could do really yeah. great because now yeah. I really know it, right? So then yeah. uh, what happened after that was uh, then I put a proposal to, to Microsoft Press. I said, hey, let's just, I, I want to write a book on MS Build itself, you know? And it ended up being a book on MS Build and Team Build. Nice. <clears throat> Nice. And then I got a lot of help from the MS Build team itself, and and then that ended up being a really great book. So uh, nice. you can go to msbuildbook.com. Yeah, let's see. I, I was just looking like it up. That's like the later editions see. of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do, do, do you still MS Build Web Deploy? Mm -hmm. Let's see. This book right here, using MS That's Build. It. That's it. That's nice. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. I, I didn't know that. I didn't know you wrote yeah. a book, too. Man, mm -hmm. you're amazing. Like, this is nice nice <laughs> go so, ahead yeah we did that and and this book actually and this is like the second edition of it or whatever but yeah it was really kind of well received and lots of great reviews yeah it has a lot and, of great ratings yeah go ahead mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and then i had my blog at the time and and i was doing speaking as well at user groups and all that kind of stuff and uh -huh. and um i think my goal at the time was to become mvp right and yes Yes. And then I, I eventually achieved that goal of MVP. Nice, nice. And then what happened was uh, there was before that was Azure, around maybe two thousand, early two thousand. That like was that. Uh, that was probably two thousand six, two thousand seven, two thousand eight, okay. somewhere around there, I think. Yeah, yeah. And then at that time, <clears throat> we had what's called TFS, Team Foundation Server. Yep. This was before Azure DevOps and yeah. And all that kind of stuff. It keeps getting rebranded from Visual Studio Online to yeah. V. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just a different name, right? <laughs> so, 
So yeah, yeah, we had that, and and then this was when uh, Brian Harry was running TFS, and and at that time they had a TFS champs uh, email alias, and mm -hmm. most of the people were a lot of were MVPs, and the others were like you know TFS experts. So I got added to that email alias, and and then I started ad asking some kind of deeper questions about um, about web deploy, mm -hmm. so or MS deploy, however you want to call that. <clears throat> about how to automate the the web publish process there and and some of that content made it into my books as well but from there there was a gentleman that was working at microsoft his name is vishal joshi mm -hmm. um, he's no longer at microsoft he actually ended up kind of leaving microsoft and developing his own ios app called joy nice and, nice. and been pretty successful at that nice um, more that recently. sounds familiar. That app sounds familiar. Joey, interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's a free wedding app. So if, uh, if somebody's getting married in the in the audience and you're looking for an app to kind of supplement your wedding, it's called Joy. Joy. Um, and it's totally free. Joy. You can organize. Yes. And I never used it, but as far yes. as I know, you can organize your whole wedding. Yep. With inside this app, right, including invitations nice. and nice. gift registries and all that kind of stuff. So I hear really great things about the app. Yep. Um, so Vishal reached out to me and um, mm -hmm. he says to me, he goes, hey, do you have a few minutes to chat on the phone? Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, of course, I got a few minutes to chat, dude. And then uh, we set up a time and, you know, this was when I was working. So it was in my evening and, and mm -hmm. his afternoon. Yeah, that's it. Joy. Oh, yeah, you're not so. getting 100,000 downloads. This yeah, is no, a this is very, uh, nice. I think recently received some, some funding. Nice. You know, so I think he's been pretty successful at this app. And, Good. Good. And Good I think he him. loves working on this because he, you know, he was like the main him and him and a few other people kind of started this whole thing a very long time ago. Right. I mean, probably 10 years ago or somewhere around there. Nice. Nice. Very nice. OK. Yeah. You so go. he called me and said, hey, do you have a few minutes to chat? I said, yeah. And then um, we had a phone interview. Uh, he called me and then said, hey, I've got this position available. I think you'd be great. It was to be a PM. And, you know, the first thing that I would do would be like, you know, web publish. So I say, yeah, it's great. Let's try it. Mm -hmm. And um, before that happened, I did interview uh, to be on the MS build team itself, I think as a developer. And that didn't, didn't go I anywhere. Didn't go through. Yeah. Didn't go through. But um, so I chat with Vishal for a few minutes and I said, yeah, I'm interested. He says, okay, I'm going to set up a formal interview. So I'll call you back on some other day and we'll do like a more formal kind of interview and then go from there mm -hmm. so i said okay that's great and then he called me back and asked me some kind of questions or whatever it was and hooked me up with some recruiter and and then they said you know can you come to redmond for for an interview i said yeah and then i went to redmond i did the interview and i remember there was there was three scheduled interviews um and then they oh, tacked on you, a few you, more at the end. You got lucky. They, they they did five to me. You know. Well, they, no, there was three scheduled, but then it turned three. into then, then, then it turned into I think six. I believe it was. Oh my god, um, <laughs> that's. <right. laughs> so you yeah, I mean, man, I was really I was really tired at the end of that day, obviously. Yeah. But um, yeah. But then after that, then they gave me an offer. And, nice. Um, man, it was pretty. It was pretty tough, actually, to be quite honest with you, because. Like with these Afghans, you know, they always kind of stay close together. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like physically, right? You know, I think yeah. like a lot of, um, I think a lot of countries over there, you know, the families do tend to stick stick together. But yeah. I think even more so in the Afghan yep. communities, because Afghans yeah. are, you yeah. know, based on the geography of the country, they're more isolated. So they yep. kind of stick closer together and, yep. and they're very kind of xenophobic, right? I mean... You know, like the, you have different groups in mm. Afghanistan, right? Like you got this group and then they don't like people from the other groups and we all just kind of stick together, right? So then that was really tough for me, right? Because, you know, they give me this offer and my whole entire family is in Jacksonville, right? And, mm. you know, not only my parents, but my three brothers. And I think two of my brothers were married at the time too. And, and then, you know, I was like, wow, now how am I going to kind of break this to my parents, you know? And, mm. And then, like, you know, they were like, they were just, you know, they didn't tell me don't go, but, you know, I could tell that they didn't want to go. Yeah, they were sad you know because I mean? you have and, to, like, relocate to Redmond and all that. Yeah. Yeah, and it was really tough, you know, and it even got to the point where I told Vishal, I said, hey, I'm not sure if I can come. 
Mm. And then they, they increase the compensation a little bit. <laughs> and then, uh... <laughs> Let's see if we can solve that problem. Yeah, Get yeah. They, more money. <laughs> yeah, they... <laughs> but, but what it was is I was talking with my manager at the time, right? I worked at this company called um, LPS, Lender Processing Services. It was, it was a financial company at the time. Mm-hmm. And then I, I, I was talking with my boss, who's a really, he was a really great boss. Um, I'm friends with him to this day. His name is Renato. Mm -hmm. And um, I was talking to him. I said, hey, what do you think about this? And he says, well, you know, typically in life, the things that you regret are the things that you chose not to do, as opposed to the things that you chose to do. So if you don't want to regret this, I would, I would say just try it. I would take it, yeah. And see what happens, you know. Yeah. And he told me that, and I was like, wow, this guy's totally right. And yeah. And then I thought to my thought to myself, I said, why did I spend all this time on these blogs and presentations and if books and gonna, MVP yeah. if I'm not going to take advantage of it? Yeah. And then, you know, I said, forget about it. I'm just going to go and do it. And um, you just it was did. like it was like, you know, from that from the from the day that Vishal called me on that phone, mm -hmm. it was less than a month later that I moved um, mm -hmm. that I moved to the Seattle area. I, I was in housing. Yeah. I did temporary housing in Redmond and then ended up staying in Seattle. But um, that was probably the best piece of advice that anybody's ever actually given me. It's it's was, it's deep. It's, yeah, yeah, it's definitely like, I, you know, a lot of people would say this these days. Say you don't want to come, you know, 40, 60 years later and say what would have happened if I said yes. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and of course, thanks to this guy, because. You know, we have you, you know, innovating all of these amazing, you know, capabilities and functionalities and helping all of us everywhere. Like, I got to tell you, Saeed, yeah, like, I have tremendous respect, you know, for what you do and the stuff that you're doing for uh, the tech community. You know, I can tell you have your heart and soul into what you're doing. This is not a job to you. This is more than that. This is a passion and, and a dedication and loyalty to the, to the quality of the work mm -hmm. that you're doing. But let me let yeah. me circle back a little to you. You know, okay, so you took mm -hmm. it, right? How was your first years at Microsoft? How did you kind of <laughs> where did you start? How did it go for you? Go ahead. Go ahead. And, yeah. and of course, yeah, yeah, of course yeah. the reason why I'm asking you about this because a lot of people kind of stay like six months, maybe a year, and be like, This is not for me, instead of actually trying to give it their best mm -hmm. shot and try to kind of adjust things. Tell me tell me what you have there. Yeah, you know, to be honest with you, I would say the first kind of year pretty much sucked you know it, was really it usually bad. is <laughs> it was really bad yeah like, um, yeah yeah you know over in seattle they have what what's referred to as the seattle freeze yep seattle freeze so nobody it's wants like to be so friends hard yeah. yeah dude it's like so hard to make friends in seattle right in yep. that whole area right and yep. and then i was you know i'm more of like typically like a quiet kind of a guy right i mean i think maybe over the years i've gotten a little more kind of extroverted but you know especially at the time i was more kind of quiet right and man it was really tough to kind of meet friends and connect with people um but what ended up happening was i was hired in june and mads christensen was hired in october and we were on the same team and, nice. and then we eventually became good friends uh and then we were after like that first year or whatever we were pretty much hanging out all the time after that so then nice. Nice. that kind of helped things a lot i think and and then I got into hiking and doing things like that. So that was really great. Uh, but man, it was, I was really kind of homesick too. Very kind of homesick, right? And Because growing in a community yeah. that's living very close together. And then all of a yeah. sudden, you know, I, I got to tell you, I felt, I felt a little bit of piece of me kind of like I'm leaving a piece of me behind when I mm -hmm. decided to kind of relocate and come all the way because I, I understand the feeling. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So what did you do about yeah. the Seattle freeze? How did you... You know, so you're so you're basically fighting two things now, right? Like you're trying to blend in and understand the company internally, but also externally, you're trying to find friends, trying to build a community. Yeah. yeah. What did you do about that? Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, yeah, little by little, I did you know make some friends and more connections there. So I think outside of work, you know, things got better over time. Nice. Nice. Um, but you know, at work, it really kind of sucked at the same time too. Because, you know, let me tell you what, dude, I was never, honestly, I was never fit to be a PM back at okay. that time. And I didn't even know what PM meant. And okay. <clears throat> my, my attitude and my behavior was just way off for being a PM, right? Like I would go around like yelling at people and, 
I would just say things that were just so mean, mm-hmm. right? And I didn't even really realize it. I mean, I, th- I think maybe I did. Re- I don't know, but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize how mean I was, I think, right? And, you know, I used to make fun of people a lot. And, and then that first year, mm-hmm. I, I thought I was on the verge of being fired. I literally got the worst review possible, right? You know, at that time, they had like a one to five scale. Mm-hmm. I, can't, I can't remember if one was the worst or five was the worst, but whatever it was, I got that worst kind you of. You got that maximum. <clears throat> okay. Okay. I got that worst rating, right? And and I was like, you know, I got that I got that rating, right? And I was like, wow, this is crazy, right? Like, you know, what is going on, right? And, mm-hmm. and then, you know, at that time, I had plenty of free time, right? And mm-hmm. I had lots of time to myself and time to think. So I was constantly thinking over everything, like, you know, what did I do wrong? Mm-hmm. What can I do better? And then uh, somebody referred to me a book that's called, let me see, let me get the actual name of it, but it's yeah. uh, Leadership and Self-Deception. Okay. But let me get the full name. Yeah, Leadership and Self-Deception, Getting Out of the Box. Let's see. So I can't remember who recommended that book for me. Uh-huh. But I read that book, and then, <clears throat> man, I can honestly say that book literally changed my life. If, if it wasn't for this book, obviously, I think I wouldn't be still working at Microsoft. Wow. So I read this book, yeah. uh-huh. and then it really kind of opened my eyes on how I should be kind of approaching life and, uh, and how I can improve myself, right? And one of the core aspects of this book is, mm-hmm. you know, you have to improve yourself. Mm-hmm. But one of the problems with improving yourself is your brain is constantly deceiving yourself. Mm. So you have to understand that. And then, as he says, get out of the box to then yeah. see the to see the self-deception. Right. If you make a decision in your mind, your mind will subconsciously deceive yourself to say that that decision was correct. Mm-hmm. And uh, literally, this book changed my whole life. I read it two or three times now. Oh my God. And then it's, it's not one person. It's a bunch of authors, mm-hmm. you know, a bunch of an, an entire institute, bunch of people. I'm sorry. Yeah, this ahead. is a, this is a very famous and very popular book uh, okay. with several different versions of it. Nice. Or maybe it's second edition. So maybe not several different versions, but um, so yeah, I read that book and, and then always since, since then always been reflecting back, you know, with interaction saying, you know, what went wrong here? How can I fix that going forward? And, you know, like one of the examples was when I first joined, there was a developer mm-hmm. and he was responsible for the whole web publish pipeline. Mm-hmm. And he was doing all the, you know, at that time, the, it was all MS build. Mm-hmm. Uh, it still is, I guess. But, um, you know, initially I was excited about working with this per- particular person, but uh, mm-hmm. we ended up really butting heads. And it was like stand up would be an hour. And like most of that hour is like Going me and him yelling at each other, dude. And yeah it was crazy dude and you know it got to the point where he was calling me names i was calling him names and and then he was even sending emails to the team with quoting ms build expert you know as if that was a bad thing at that time and (laughs) whatever idea i came with he he told me it was a bad idea Mm -hmm. like for example the way that web publish works this was like you know back in this was i think uh you know visual studio 2010 right and Mm -hmm. They didn't have uh, like a proper web publish experience back then you know they had you know support to publish but it wasn't it was just very basic it was tied up in visual studio so i came with a proposal that said hey the the published profiles should be ms build files themselves Mm -hmm. and then when we publish we can import that published profile into the overall uh, project file so then we can have access to the to the build settings and modify the build settings and then this developer was like no that's not possible we're gonna have to like understand everything about ms build to, to maintain this file mm-hmm. and i was like what are you talking about dude so i went home like on the weekend and i created like this wpf app that looked like the published dialogue we had at the time but it was reading and writing to an ms build file right and nice <clears throat> i said hey here's your prototype here's how you got to do it and then he still wasn't on board or whatever right so then i had to go to the manager at the time and i said hey look here's what's happening he's telling me this is impossible but i've created this prototype it is. that yeah. shows you it's not yeah I'm, I'm really confident that this is the right model for us and then end up that being a great model right like i look back on my kind of career and there's a few things that i kind of came up with that I think so are really proud great, of the right? most, and yeah, I think yeah. the web publish 
profile, the .pub XML files. <clears throat> that was one of my kind of greatest kind of nice. insights. And, you know, nice. it was hard to kind of figure that out. But, man, and, you know, it still serves us to, the, to, to this day. Yeah. A lot of other projects have adopted that same published profile. Um, so, yeah, looking back, it was a great kind of model. I'm glad that I was able to finally finish doing that. Um, but, yeah, it was a real kind of struggle. But I'm a totally different person now versus what I was. You know, if you, if you interacted with me 12 or 15 years ago, you would say, hey, these are two totally different people. Like, you wouldn't that, even be able to recognize me. Said that's, 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 that's an amazing thing. That means there's growth. There's change. There's evolution mm -hmm. that's going on. By, yeah. by the way, just so you know, like, I'm just sitting here, like, listening to your story, you know, because I know a lot of people today would have just one challenge out of these challenges that you listed. Like, you know, the challenge traveling, you know, going away from your community, uh, you know, growing up, you know, with certain, you know, financial and economical challenges and all that one of these today could make someone quit and be like you know there's no point and somehow you just kept pushing through man this is this is great mm -hmm. this is inspiring let me ask you this what keeps you going what keeps you going like that i think like, what, what kept me going back then is different from what kind of keeps me going now right okay tell me i think what kept me going back then was i just wanted to be I wanted to stand out, I guess, right? And, you know, I wanted to be something more than everybody else that I had seen next to me, right? And I wanted to make something out of myself, right? And I always felt like I had potential, but I had challenges to then apply that, right? So I always wanted to, I always wanted to create things and, and to be somebody, I guess, right? So that mm -hmm. I think was what kind of motivated me. And and then I was also kind of very interested in these kind of technologies and software development in general, right? And and I think that's kind of what motivated motivated like me. I love and time, passion right? for this. Yeah. Yeah. Passion, what about the, right? what about today? What keeps you going today? <clears throat> I think today is uh, you know, my life is totally different today than what it was before, right? You know, I got my two children. I got my son Syed Sameh. He's he's he'll be turning four in March and. Nice. I got my daughter Sonia. They're sitting right here next to me. And nice. Nice. What I what motivates me today is really them. You know, like what yeah. can I do to make like them you know I had a yeah. lot of kind of challenges like what you mentioned right in life yeah. right. What can I do for them to make it easier? You know, like and honestly, you know, I think I got lucky, dude. Like, you know, a typical a typical person like me. You know, I don't think I ever would have made it to Microsoft without luck. You know what I mean? And 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 also that perseverance, right? You know, I mean, it wasn't a hundred percent luck, but I think yeah, there was that, a I lot was just, of luck there, right? Yeah, but, yeah. Honestly, I just whispered to myself, I was like, no, this guy, this guy is a fighter. You know, he's 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 very persistent. There might have been a sure. little bit of luck there, but there's a little bit more. Yeah, there's a little bit of a warrior there, someone who really wants to keep yeah. going. Yeah, but to I be think honest, there's a lot of people out there like that. You know, yeah, that's they true. they're unlucky. Yes. And then they don't get the right opportunity to really show themselves, right? Yep. So, yep. so that's what I mean by that, right? And, yep. you know, like with that book, right? I mean, I never would have written a book if my brother didn't come to me and say, let's write a book. And I probably never would have became an MVP. And if Vishal Joshi never reached out to me on email, I may have probably never made it to Microsoft. And, and if Renato didn't tell book. me that piece of advice, yeah, I was yeah. lucky to have those things happen, right? A lot of people, they think, you know, if I work hard and... And if I apply myself, I'll be successful. No, you also have there to are, be lucky. Yeah, There is luck yeah. involved with everybody's kind of story, I think. And whether yeah. they want to admit it or not. Yeah. You know, yeah. But, so, but yeah, so, you know, the perseverance helps. Yeah. Let, let, let me ask you this. You know, just going back, right? When you when you look back, you look, you know, I see, I see perseverance. Just like you said, you know, I see a lot of, you know, you're, you're really tenacious, you know, you want to learn, you want to grow, you want to keep going, right? And today you have a whole new purpose, right? Like, I'll tell you that much, you know, and you correct me if I'm wrong, right? You know, your children, you know, as a purpose of the people that you look at and you want to improve their lives and you want to make it better, they just added more to the energy, you know, that you already have. They added more to the passion and dedication and purpose that you have, but the interesting thing that i am hearing from your story here is that and, and just for the people watching and listening to this podcast if you are working with syed on anything if you're talking to him about anything 
you sound like someone who just graduated college and wants to beat the world. You want to put a dent mm -hmm. in the universe. There's something else in there. <laughs> Tell me what you got. Tell me. Yeah, no, that's that's definitely true too, right? You know, we, yeah. we always strive to kind of create things and then and then, you know, we want to have our kind of creations to kind of live on even beyond ourselves, right? Or to kind of stay there, right? So so yeah, I always wanted to kind of create things that were I, I always wanted to be useful, basically, right? And I always wanted to to be able to apply myself to something and then have an impact on people, right? And and I think, you know, developer tools is really a way to really, there's, mul you know, it's a, it's a force multiplier when you're doing yep. developer tools, right? Because yep. you create tools for developers and then they it, use it, those it, tools they, yeah. to then create apps for, for yep. regular people, right? So I can yep. do one thing and then a million people can use it and then it becomes this, this huge out. thing, yep. right? With a yep. giant impact, right? And yep. I always wanted to make a positive kind of impact on people's lives and, and, and just make a name for myself, I guess, right? Yep. I mean, um, so yeah, I think developer tools is a great way to do that. And, you know, honestly, when I look back, I say to myself, wow, I was always kind of meant to be in the tooling space. You feel because, like your whole life just shaved up to yeah, be, I mean, to come to that point. Yeah. Because, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, in the beginning, even all the way back to the beginning, right? Because we talked about, you know, I would do basic and yep. the reason why I was doing basic was to kind of automate some of my own kind of tasks, right? And yep. Yep. And then eventually, like I started creating developer tools even before working at Microsoft, right? Like um, yep. I was when I was at the University of Florida, we were doing, you know, the uh, it was a website for managing the the dorms. Mm -hmm. And then at that mm -hmm. time, we were using CSS and CSS was very different back then than what it was now. And nice. and then I created a little framework for myself. And I, I think I called it um, dynamic extensible styles. Nice. And and then I used that, so that was almost kind of like a little developer tooling for myself. Uh, it never really nothing happened with it or whatever, but yeah. Um, and then yeah, and then I was always trying to figure out ways, you know, hey, how can I stop repeating myself, right? So I always create tools to kind of kind automate of my own things. sort of tasks, yeah. right? So, let, let, yeah. let me let me ask you this, Ed. You know, what are you looking forward towards? What are you trying to do next? What's your? How do you visualize your future? that's a tough one. wow man that's a tough question you know because <laughs> i'm not the type of <clears throat> i'm not the type of person to kind of look in the future and be like hey here's where i want to be in five or ten years right that's and fair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i try to live more in the moment right you know here's what i have now and and here's what i'm trying to work towards right and yep you're an engineer then, just show me yeah. a broken thing and i'll yeah. fix it you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then, you know, for my own kind of journey or whatever, you know, I told you that, you know, I came on at Microsoft and I was a PM2 at the time when I first started. And, and you know, my my first year, I got the absolute worst review. My second year, I got the second to worst review. So my goal at that time was, hey, how do I just survive? I want to prove to myself that I can make it at Microsoft. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. like, there's one thing to get hired at Microsoft. But it's another thing to then survive at Microsoft. Yep. Right? So that yep. was my goal. And then. And then after I proved that I could survive at Microsoft, then I say, hey, how can I prove that I can thrive at Microsoft and yep. and really prove that, that I deserve to be here? Yep, um, yep. And I think it was, um, I recently got a promotion to principal, so I think. Congratulations. I think now I've yeah. kind of shown that, you know. You're I, a big guy, I'm telling you, you, you deserve it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, it's a big title and, you know, hey, as far as I know, I'm the only Afghan to get to the principal level at Microsoft. There you so go. I think, I think that's a big achievement. As far as I know, I could be wrong on that one, but um, yeah. But now you know. Now I just kind of passed that milestone, right? So, yep. you know, when I look at the future, right? I mean, the next kind of big step on this ladder is partner. Yes. And uh, you know, I'm not the type to kind of manage people. I just don't like people manage. I just don't like the idea of people management. So, yeah. The idea of becoming a partner, PM, a partner individual PM. contributing yeah. pm yeah. is really kind of difficult to i doubt that i'll ever get there but i could have uh, said the same thing about principal look, five years ago too right but look, look man you know your family fleed afghanistan under the russian invasion you know so you escaped that and then you escaped you know financial and economical disadvantages you know in one way or another you escaped you know the schooling systems 
right? You know, you find you kind of found your way outside of that. You know, you 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 know, you figured out, you escaped even your own self doubt. You know, when it came to writing a book, you know, you you kind of escaped the whole uh, kind of you know stick sticking together. You lift everything behind. My man, I see through your story. You know, you've had every every reason in the world to quit and you didn't and i'm telling you this right now this is a podcast i'm telling you this is recorded you will be partner you will be great you know side you know that's that you're you're solid solid human being and you know i think that it's inspiring for me and just mm-hmm. just for a lot of people out there that you know they may get one like i've seen some people on the younger side i didn't carbon date them but some of them would be like oh i got bad review this year my career is over <laughs> <laughs> so, so just so you know, here's here's yeah. this brother right here. He's a principal technical program manager on the Visual Studio team, the Dev Dev. This guy builds tools for millions of engineers out there. Like you couldn't get, you know, much higher impact engineering job, you know, if you wanted to, you know, than something like that. And still, you know, I, it's really important for me to show you that back story, that backside that tells you, you know, Syed wasn't born with a, what do you, what, what do they call it, Syed? Like a silver golden spoon. silver spoon, you know, in his mouth. You know, he didn't go, you know, to fancy colleges or his dad, you know, kind of put him in Harvard or Yale or anything like that. Just, just, just a regular mm-hmm. human being who's doing super amazing things. You know, Syed, I want to ask you this. What advice do you have for you know, people that are still, you know, finding their way in the tech industry, yeah, even those yeah, who yeah. don't even know. Somehow this video right. is going to end up in some corner on the earth. Sure, sure. And I want you to talk to these people. Yeah. What do you want to tell them? Go ahead. Yeah. And I think this kind of circles back to to the to a previous question of, um, you know, what advice do you have? Right. So my advice is I kind of laid out the two approaches to getting to these kind of big tech companies. Right. The the easy path and the hard path. The easy path is go to school, get good grades, get an internship. Internship is the absolutely most important thing. Mm. Get an internship. And then from there, it's free sailing, right? And Mm -hmm. like, for example, I told you my story, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my story consisted of, you know, getting bad grades, no internships, poor pay in the beginning. I had to write four books. I became an MVP. I had to drive all everywhere around Florida giving presentations. Nice. Finally, I got a job at Microsoft. Right now, compare that to another person. Right when I was when um, six or seven years ago, I had the opportunity to manage an intern from the University of Texas in Austin. His name was his name is Sarab, mm-hmm. and um, let me tell you his story, or uh-huh. his kind of abbreviated story. Right. So in his yep. case, he got good grades. He got an internship. When he came on that internship, what we did was we worked together to create a, uh, this was at the infancy of what we call ASP.NET Core now. Uh I think back then we were calling it Project K or something like that. Uh Um, So we created an open source way uh, to create those projects. Um, Let me me get a link for you real quick. Yeah, Um, yeah. Nice. So it was, oh yeah, first what we first, the first thing that we worked on together is uh, what we called culture. And I'll, uh, oh yeah, it's github.com. Hold on, how can I, how can I send you a link? Uh, Chat. Uh, In the chat, yeah. There you go. So this was what we created. I I thought we moved this over to OmniSharp. Let me see if I did. Let me see, did we move that to the OmniSharp? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, actually, the OmniSharp repository is the one, but it started okay. in that that other organization there. So so I worked with him, and we created this. Uh-huh. And then after that, we started creating the... Uh-huh. It was built on Yeoman. So there's there's a popular way to create uh, templates uh-huh. for web developers called Yeoman. Uh-huh. So we created a Yeoman generator. Let me see if I can find that repository. Okay. Uh, it's also in the OmniSharp repository. Yeah. What was it? It was like, it was Yo ASP.NET. Let me see if I can find this one. This is Sarab talking, says, you know, in this video too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's him. Yeah. That's him. So then, yeah, here's, I'll give you the other link too. One second. So after we created that culture project, then we started creating the generator ASP.NET. Uh-huh. 
And and then this thing ended up being used by lots of people, dude. I was totally shocked. We were in the top ten yeoman generators, and it was nice. so popular. The people at Yeoman sent me a like a a bunch of stickers too, right? <laughs> nice. But let me get back to a story, right? So you yeah. know, he got good grades in school. He got the internship, and then on the internship, we worked on this really great project that ended up getting used by a bunch of people. And uh -huh. as far as I know, that this this was the most successful intern project that I've ever heard of or been a part of. Because normally the intern will work on something and something might get released, but probably not. And then it will get fixed up and then released. But this one, real people were using it. Hundreds of thousands of people used that. Nice. And then from that, he got an offer to work at Microsoft. And then he got a six-figure signing bonus. Mm -hmm. Right? So, you know, my advice to people is you should go with Sarab's route, not my route. Uh -huh. right? Like my uh -huh. route, you know, you really have to get lucky. Uh -huh. right? But in uh -huh. his route... You know, I think he got he got a little bit lucky too because he kind of landed on like a cool project, and we ended up creating this really great thing. And uh -huh. there's uh -huh. a little bit of luck involved with him too. But so that would be my advice: is you know, hey, take the easy path, not the hard path, right? And yeah. Yeah. Don't you know spend more time on grades and stuff like that. But but I'm not sure. You know, people they have to find their own way, right? And exactly. You know, I, I was yeah, just gonna tell you, like yeah. you know, you know, there are people that just you know they don't have the opportunity they don't choose the hard way the hardware chooses them and i feel sometimes it did choose you you know mm -hmm. while you think that oh i could have done this or that you know it was all just you know a a sequence of events that just led you one way or another you know to this place and you know i just want to tell you something though you know um you know i really appreciate the work that you're doing please continue by the way just so you guys know this guy has a lot in his pocket i can't talk about it but he has a lot of stuff that he wants to bring to Visual Studio. And he continues, like him and his team continue to bring a lot of cool things. Like, you know, a lot of you have seen, you know, these tiny things that I'm posting, these quick giffies that I put. That's all Syed. That's all Syed. Like, if you go into, by the way, this is the stuff that you were telling me about. That's the most popular tweets I've ever had. That's just mm -hmm. like just popular. Just, just so you guys know, Syed just went in and said, hey, dude. Go tell the people about this. This is amazing. You know, this is go tell people mm -hmm. about this. Let me see because because LinkedIn actually is, believe it or not, LinkedIn is showing the full. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. This was this was my brother side here. You know, he's he just sat there and be like, hey, you want something cool to show people? Here you go. Here's a little, you know, thing that you can just kind of play around with. He has a lot in his mind. Like there's a lot of stuff that he's trying to drive. This guy really cares about us as software engineers. He wants to make our lives so much easier he wants to make enhance the engineering experience him and i agree on a lot of things when it comes to you know one stop shop run everything in the development environment and i really love the fact that there are people in the visual studio team and div div team that actually drive this vision you know i can't wait to see what you're going to introduce next and you know i hope you would agree to come back to our podcast to talk about more specific topics. I just usually in this podcast we bring people, we tell them, "Hey, who are you? Tell us your story." Mm -hmm. Beautiful story, by the way. Even though there's a lot of struggle and and it also shows a lot of perseverance. It also shows a lot of patience and strength in there. And uh, you know, I'm I'm really happy that you told this story today because every single thing that you said is an excuse that I heard from someone at some point in my life to not keep going. Right. Be like, you know, what am I going to do? I'm not privileged like these other kids, yeah, you know, sure. so I'm just going to stop. Um, mm -hmm. You know, thank you so much, Saeed, for coming in today and agreeing to talk to me a little bit. I know it's Friday and I yeah, know you're right. a busy guy and I know you have a lot in your mind. And uh, I hope you I hope you would come back again. We'll talk more specific stuff, more technical yeah. stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, along the way, you know, we just talk about some hot topics, you know, like open source. And, you know, uh, you know, you're someone who dabbled in this for Said, Said, you've been in the tech industry now, what, 30 years now? 20? Uh, 2005. So, yeah. yeah. More Give or take. Closing in on 20 years, I guess. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Beautiful. For a while, dude. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. I appreciate. I think, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I think uh, going back to the question of, you know, what advice do you have? What advice would I give a young person now? Yeah. I would tell people to follow their passions. And don't worry about money or success. Just find something that you really love. Mm -hmm. I don't care what it is, whether I'll that's programming come. or or like, you know, golfing or whatever it is. Just yeah. find your passion and then try to follow that somehow. Yep. Yeah. And, yep. and also be open, right? 
Yep. Like, let's say if your passion is basketball, but you know, maybe you're not tall enough or, or big enough to be a basketball player, Adjust. find something else that's adjacent yeah. to basketball that you can then kind of still do your passion, right? Like and for me, right? I always yeah. wanted to be a developer. Yeah. And I still kind of I still kind of look at myself as a developer, but I've been in, you know, product management for 12 years, right? So, yep, yep. You are, you are an engineer to me. I'll tell you that, you know, someone who does what yeah. they do, what they do, you know, but I appreciate you, sir. And, and you know, um, you know, of course for the people watching us as usual, you know, please I'm going to give you the links for Syed's uh social media accounts. Please go check this guy's, you know, he's he's amazing. He has a lot of things you know, to share. And, uh, you know, as usual, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you know, or compliments for Syed here, please feel free to drop a comment in the comment section. And as usual, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much, brother. See you later. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.